Good afternoon, I'm Aqua Cephas and I welcome you all to my channel. Today we will be talking about the Azusa Street Revival. The Azusa Street Revival was a historic revival meeting that took place in Los Angeles, California. It was led by William J. C. Moore, an African American preacher. The start on the three-year revival began on April 9, 1906 and continued until roughly 1915. On the night of April 9, 1906, Seymour and seven men were waiting on God on Bonnie Bray Street, when suddenly, as though hit by a bolt of lightning, they were knocked from their chairs to the floor and the other seven men began to speak in tongues and shout out loud praising God. The news quickly spread. The city was stirred. Crowds gathered. And a few days later Seymour himself received the Holy Spirit. Services were moved outside to accommodate the crowds who came from all around. People fell down under the power of God as they approached. People were baptized in the Holy Spirit and the sick were healed and sinners received salvation. To further accommodate the crowds, an old dilapidated, two-story frame building at 312 Azusa Street in the industrial section of the city was secured. This building, originally built for an African Methodist Episcopal AIM church, had more recently been used as a livery stable, storage building and tenement house. In this humble Azusa Street mission, a continuous three-year revival occurred and became known around the world. Stanley H. Fritsham, in his book, with signs following, quotes an eyewitness description of the scene, the revival was characterized by spiritual experiences accompanied with testimonies of physical healing miracles, worship services, and speaking in tongues. The participants were criticized by some secular media and Christian theologians for behaviors considered to be outrageous and unorthodox, especially at the time. Today, the revival is considered by historians to be the primary catalyst for the spread of Pentecostalism in the 20th century. By 1913, the revival at Azusa Street had lost momentum, and most of the media attention and crowds had left by 1915. Seymour remained there with his wife, Jenny, for the rest of their lives as pastors of the small African-American congregation, though he often made short trips to help establish other smaller revivals later in life. After Seymour died of a heart attack on September 28, 1922, Jenny led the church until 1931, when the congregation lost the building. In 1905, William J. Seymour, the one-eyed 34-year-old son of freed slaves, was a student of well-known Pentecostal preacher Charles Parham and an interim pastor for a small holiness church in Topeka, Kansas. Seymour inherited from Parham the belief that baptism with the Holy Spirit was the third work of grace, following the new birth, first work of grace, and entire sanctification, second work of grace. Neely Terry, an African-American woman who attended a small holiness church pastored by Julia Hutchins in Los Angeles made a trip to visit family in Houston late in 1905. While in Houston, she visited Seymour's church, where he preached on receiving the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and though he had not experienced this personally, Terry was impressed with his character and message. Once home in California, Terry suggested that Seymour be invited to speak at the local church. Seymour received and accepted the invitation in February 1906, and he received financial help and a blessing from Parham for his planned one-month visit. Seymour arrived in Los Angeles on February 22, 1906, and within two days was preaching at Julia Hutchins Church at the corner of 9th Street and Santa Fe Avenue. During his first sermon, he preached that speaking in tongues was the first biblical evidence of the inevitable infilling in the Holy Spirit. On the following Sunday, March 4, he returned to the church and found that Hutchins had padlocked the door. Elders of the church rejected Seymour's teaching, primarily because he had not yet experienced the blessing about which he was preaching. Condemnation of his message also came from the Holiness Church Association of Southern California with which the church had affiliation. However, not all members of Hutchins' church rejected Seymour's preaching. He was invited to stay in the home of congregation member Edward S. Lee, and he began to hold Bible studies and prayer meetings there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to leave your comments.